Hello everyone, my name is Ole Jungqvist. I'm a professor of surgery in Sweden and I'm also the chairman of the ERA Society. Today we're going to talk about compliance, compliance to the ERAS guidelines. The guidelines consist of a number of different care elements and we've been finding through a lot of research around the world that the better you comply with these elements in your care process, the better the outcomes are going to be. So we measure these compliance, uh, the compliance with these elements. And the way that we calculate compliance is a very simple way just looking at the number of elements that you're actually fulfilling with each and every patient and divide it with the number of elements of care for that specific process. So you may have 50% compliance, 60, 70, or 80. In the development of the uh, compliance measurement tool, the ERA Society decided to divide the care process into different phases, from pre-admission to pre-operative, immediately pre-operative to intraoperative and post-operative. And we can actually measure compliance specifically for each one of these periods, and they will give you some important information. In the pre-admission phase, it will tell you whether you are actually optimizing the patient to the best extent possible before they enter the surgery. In the pre-operative phase, you are actually managing the patient to be absolutely fit for surgery in the immediate pre-operative phase. For instance, you are managing their metabolism or you're managing their fluid balance, making sure that they are in the best possible condition for the stress that they're about to undergo. During surgery, obviously, the thing is to make sure that you take the patient through with minimal stress and minimal uh, changes to the basic homeostasis. A very important part of the ERAS protocol, not least for the patient, are the post-operative uh, care elements. Mm -hmm. These are uh, the elements where the patients um, are mobilizing, they're eating, and they're doing it without pain. Now, in order to get a good compliance for these elements, you have to have performed your ERAS up until then in the best possible way. Otherwise, they will fail. Many people ask me, which elements are the most important for me to use in the ERAS protocol? There's too many of them. Well, the truth is that you need to find out what you are actually doing to begin with in order for me to help you find out what is most important for you to do. The reason for that is that, in fact, care processes are extremely variable among different hospitals. Even within a single department, it may vary a lot. So for each individual caretaker or team of caretakers, it's about where their starting point is that is going to determine what are the elements that are most important. People ask me, how high do I have to go to have a good compliance? Well, the answer to that is that uh, it depends on where your starting point is. The reason for measuring compliance is to help you and your team to get better results. If your compliance is very low, let's say in the 30s, if you double that compliance rate, you're going to see tremendous improvements in outcomes for your patients. If you're already at a higher level, let's say 50% or 55. If you get across 70 or 75 or even higher, again, you're going to see marked improvements in your patient outcomes. And everybody on the ward will see how well the patients are doing. So it's all about your starting point and what is reasonable to accept within the, uh, a reasonable period of time. Of course, in the end, we should all strive to get a high compliance, but never 100% because there will be medical reasons for not using the full ERAS protocol, and that is something that you, with your medical knowledge in your team, are going to have to decide. All we are doing is giving you a recommendation in general terms of the direction and the care processes that have been shown in the literature to give better outcomes. Good luck.